Hello, and welcome to the California Department of Public Health Radiologic Health Branch's Guide to Completing the RH313A Training and Experience Form. This video will explain the use of the Radiation Safety Officer Form, however, a similar format is used for the other Training and Experience Forms. This is an interactive form designed to guide you through the form with the information you provide. Please make sure that you are using a web browser without a PDF plugin that is enabled or save the file to your computer before proceeding. At any time, you may print the form and complete it by hand. When you first open the file, you will find that the majority of the form is not fillable. The sections that you do need to complete are indicated by blue borders. As you complete the form, additional sections will be enabled, also indicated by blue borders. There is a reset form button on every page of the form if you need to clear the data. Once you authorize the reset, you will not be able to retrieve the data. Please print a copy for your records prior to submitting to the RHB. The training and experience requirements for a radiation safety officer can be found in 10 CFR Part 35, Section 50. Before completing the form, please visit the NRC's website for the list of Radiation Safety Officer Specialty Board certifications recognized by the NRC under 10 CFR Part 35. Please remember that all requirements of the board certification must be met, such as the words RSO eligible appearing on the certificate in order to use the board certification pathway. If you do not meet all of the requirements, you must use the training and experience pathway, which we will discuss later. Please note that board certification in diagnostic radiology Radiation Oncology and other specialty boards recognized for authorized users are not recognized for radiation safety officers. Let's take a look at Part 1 on the first page. Part 1 is the amendment request and has two sections. If you are requesting to appoint a new radiation safety officer, Part 1A should be completed by a member of senior management, such as the president, the owner, or the chief executive officer. Please provide the name of the proposed radiation safety officer, the number of the radioactive materials license for which you are requesting this change, the name and title of the person authorizing the request, and the date. After printing the completed form, please sign the required sections. If you are adding additional authorizations to the license or the proposed radiation safety officer is already qualified for some authorizations and require additional training, please complete Part 1B. You may indicate the additional authorizations you are requesting in this section. Please check the boxes next to the authorizations or subsections as appropriate. This particular form is for radiation safety officers for a 35100 through 35600. For 35,000 uses, please check the 35,000 box and see the RHB website for the appropriate guides and submit the training and experience documentation as specified in those guides. For this video, I will be proposed RSO, a certified nuclear medicine technologist requesting to be appointed as the radiation safety officer. 
Let's start filling out the form. The president of my organization, named Dr. President, will be signing and submitting this request. I have not been listed on any radioactive materials license, and my entire training and experience will be documented in the following pages, so I will not complete Part 1b. Part 2 is for the training and experience information. If the proposed radiation safety officer was listed on a California radioactive materials license as the radiation safety officer within the last seven years for all of the authorizations listed on the license and any additional authorizations marked in Part 1b, please check yes and enter the license number in question 1. If you scroll through the form, you will see that no other field is activated and you have completed the form. There is a verify and print button at the end of the form, but I will discuss that later. For question two, if the proposed radiation safety officer was listed on a master materials license, NRC, or an agreement state license or permit within the last seven years for all of the authorizations requested, please check yes and provide a copy of that license. Next, for question 3, if the proposed radiation safety officer was listed on any license as the radiation safety officer for any authorization, check yes and enter the California Radioactive Materials License number or provide a copy of the non-California license. If he or she had not been listed on a license within the last 7 years, enter no and move on to question number 4. Question 4 addresses the board certification for the proposed radiation safety officer. As stated earlier, the board certification must be listed under the NRC recognized specialty board certification list under 3550, Training for Radiation Safety Officer. At the time of recording, these are the recognized specialty boards for the radiation safety officer. If the proposed radiation safety officer is board certified in any of these, check yes and skip to the specified item. For proposed RSO who does not have any of the recognized specialty board certifications, I will check no and continue. If the proposed radiation safety officer is board certified by any of the medical physicist specialty boards, you may check yes on number 5 and move on to the specified item. Since proposed RSO does not have any of these board certificates, I will check no and continue to number 6. If the proposed radiation safety officer has been listed on this license as an authorized user, authorized medical physicist, or an authorized nuclear pharmacist, check yes and proceed to the specified item. If it is a non-California license, provide a copy of that license. If it is a broad scope license, Provide a letter from the radiation safety officer of that license confirming the authorizations and the dates.
Since proposed RSO is a certified nuclear medicine technologist and has not been listed on a license as an authorized user, authorized medical physicist, or an authorized nuclear pharmacist, I will check no and move on to question number seven. There are tables in item seven where I can document the hours of training and experience. I will complete these tables. At the time of recording, the requirements for the training and experience pathway are as follows. Completion of a structured educational program consisting of 200 hours of classroom and laboratory training in the areas identified in Table 7A, and one year of full-time radiation safety experience involving areas identified in Table 7B. This experience must be acquired under the supervision of a radiation safety officer listed on a license authorized for similar types of uses. Please refer to 10 CFR 35.50 for the complete training and experience requirements for the radiation safety officer as they may change. I will enter my supervising individual's information as well. As you can see, number 8 is now enabled. I will complete the section for the training in radiation safety regulatory issues, and emergency procedures required by 10 CFR 3550E. If you have more than one supervising individual, please provide the information for each. Part 3 is the preceptor attestation section. Complete the fields and have the preceptor sign the printed form. After you have completed the form, you may use the Verify and Print button at the end of the form to check if you missed any fields. I am going to clear one of the required fields to demonstrate this function. The Verify and Print button is to confirm that all required fields have been completed. It does not verify that the information entered meets the training and experience requirements. If you have any missing fields, they will be indicated by red borders. Please return to and complete the fields indicated in red. If all fields have been completed, you have the option to print the form. If you select No, you may print the form using the Adobe Print function at the top of the Acrobat Reader menu at any time.
Again, please remember to submit all necessary documents, such as a copy of the board certificate meeting the NRC requirements, complete copies of any non-California licenses, and Broscope Radiation Safety Officer verification letters, if applicable, and submit your request in duplicate. To appoint a new Radiation Safety Officer, be sure to include a copy of the duties and responsibilities of the Radiation Safety Officer and Delegation of Authority form signed by both a member of Senior Management and the proposed Radiation Safety Officer. I hope this video guide has been informative. Thank you for watching.